Hey everybody, it's the last Robo Kai here, and welcome to episode 8 of Let's Play Dawn of War, Mission 8, where, well, we're, we're done with the Orcs, we're done with the Eldar, just shove them off, tip them off, they're, they're, they're still around, but they're not going to be really that significant anymore, definitely not seeing any Orcs anymore, even though they're like literally covering Tartarus like a giant green blanket. Who cares, because it's chaos time, that's right. The, uh, the second oldest grudge match in, uh, <laughs> in the uh, history of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. And it is, uh, it is a cracker, and we are going to be having a big old fight across the ruins of... Uh, that city that I kept pointing out seemed like it didn't have any problems and was really safe. Uh, boy, that's egg on my face. And uh, joining, me, <laughs> joining me on this adventure into heresy. It's not just, it's not just egg. It's also, uh, it's also bla uh, black blood, weird, uh, weird armor, and way too many spikes. Way too many spikes, because that's that's chaos's entire aesthetic. Yes, that's right. It's cool, guy. And so it's time for us to just see exactly what the chaos boys have uh, have been getting up to now that they've they've thrown off their uh, their their shroud of secrecy and gone yes we're here and we're doing the things we do best and it's not surprising at all let's get stuck straight in <laughs> the great enemy managed to steal the key from out of our very grasp damn the eldar and their arrogance had we not been delayed in reaching the key we could have denied the ruinous powers their prize. We still have no idea what this key does. According to the Eldar Witch, Inquisitor Toth holds these answers. If this is true, then he has a good deal to explain. The least of which is not why he would withhold information that could allow us to better fight the forces of chaos. Could he be tainted? The thought is unimaginable. Even more concerning, we know now that we face more than mere chaos cults, but members of an actual traitor legion, the very marines who turned against our emperor some ten millennia ago. Luckily, our scouts were able to track their sorcerer and his entourage back to their base of operations. It is located not far from our current position. I relish in the opportunity to bring death to these blasphemous traitors. My lord, blood ravens approach from the south. How did they get so close? My lord, these flies are minor annoyances. We have the key and ample bodies to imprison the blood ravens behind a wall of corpses while we complete the ceremony. Your assurances leave me cold, Sindri. Events have proven my words true in every turn, my lord. We are not in danger. Events have proven you fortunate sorcerer. To what do you owe this present bout of nauseous optimism? We have received a message, Lord Bale. We have a new ally who is more than ready to betray the Blood Ravens. Excellent. Prepare for what is to come, and dispose of this idiot. Why? Uh, how have I failed? You were stupid enough to personally deliver ill news to Lord Bale. And we cannot abide stupidity. Brother Matteo, report. The Chaos Forces have rent an impassable chasm through the center of the city, and have taken up position in a temple. The battle is upon us, Captain! We are arriving at your position momentarily. Hold the chasm. 
I will deal with the temple. It will be done. You are finished, Apothecary. Had the Emperor not intended I suffer, then I would feel no pain. What foul acts are these heathens involved in? They are performing a ceremony to release the key from its bindings. We must stop them. Yes. We will need to break down the mighty doors of that once glorious temple. It appears they have rent a chasm across the city, stopping us from reaching the other side. An outpost with machine cults located here gives us access to the vehicles we will surely require. Secure the outpost and stop that ceremony. I'm very fond of that entire intro. I especially love just the, like, the little bit at the start where the cultist is running along. And <clears throat> sometimes, sometimes it just goes perfectly silently. And then just that one time when I was recording it, you just hear a Chaos Space Marine laughing at the cultist as he run past. Yup. <laughs> yup, I was, I was going to comment. Run like a weenie! Pretty sure that uh, that doesn't that doesn't happen mo uh, most times. That's just totally random. It's a it's an idle it's an idle animation for the standard Chaos Space Marine unit. So they had them deployed just out of sight in front of the gates, and one of them just did his did did the laugh sequence. <laughs> <laughs> I do I like, like I the the you run like a weenie thing is definitely some uh, something a Chaos Marine would say in this game though. Like the the, the weird the weird accent that the uh, that the Chaos cultist had in that cutscene is exactly the one that they that they have when you're commanding them in game. Mm -hmm. It's just, they they sound so incredibly obnoxious. You're like as a Chaos player, you're almost glad when you just send them into the middle to die. Yeah, Chaos Cultists are, of course, the uh, the first unit of the of the Chaos Space Marine units. Uh, Chaos Space Marines are just distinguishable enough from a regular Space Marine army in a lot of ways, uh, but it isn't really until we start to hit the expansions where they get a bit more fleshing out that sort of puts them more into their niche of being a, a heavy close combat army. Like a, a like especially early game, uh, they start they suffer from the fact that a their, their major close combat unit is just the weedy cultists, and, mm -hmm. you know, they don't really, they don't carry very well into, like, later game. You can give them grenade launches, but they don't, they, their survivability is just atrocious. And, um, and so you kind of, like, you're kind of looking at the, your, your Chaos Space Marines as your, uh, as your guys that hold the line there, and you don't really get any sort of decent close combat troops uh, until, like, when you've pretty much reached your final tiers, so I kind of like it's a, it's kind of like a bit of a, a bit of a void there. Thankfully, Winter Assault adds a adds a good early to mid tier close combat unit. Oh, obviously, they do have their own jump pack troops, but you know, jump pack troops. Um, these are the Raptors, as they're known. Yeah, as. one of one of the biggest problems that uh, that cha uh, that chaos suffers from in this particular game is that any any uh, unit they have that's more or less cloned from. Uh, from the Space Marines, which is like their ba their basic tactical squads, and the Chaos Raptors, which is their jump pack squad, they're almost identical to the sp uh, to the Space Marines's, except for the fact that they have substantially lower morale, which turns and out to be a really and slightly big higher problem. close combat. <laughs> right, yeah, and it's just, uh, the morale in particular turns out to be a really big problem in pitched battles because after something breaks, it's doing almost no damage. So like it's just like hey I'm I'm better in close combat too bad it doesn't matter because uh, because I have a ni minus ninety percent or whatever it is malice on my uh, on my total damage output. Cool. And I believe the uh, the leaders of a, of a chaos uh, like the champions instead of sergeants don't have the same sort of special return all your morale power that uh, either they have more of like a an attack buff. Ability I believe again. that uh, that is that is the case. I yeah. don't. Yes, that is the uh, that is the case. It took me a, a minute to recall that, but yeah, they don't have rally. Like yeah. rally. So is just so again, thing. they're just they're not as they're yeah. not as strong and redoubtable as the space marines, but they have to. They have a sort of a bit more of an inclination to get in closer, where it's more likely for their morale to get sapped. So it's kind mm -hmm. of a eh, you know. But like I said, they they balance that out in winter assault. Uh, Correct. By by adding adding the best chaos boys in existence, so it's all right. But for uh, for for now, uh, our mission is to scour this area clear, where we've got a big old uh, big old section of the map we can't access. 
We're kind of technically on a timer because, like, as always, those waves that are smashing into the machine cult that we can't get at right now are only going to get uh, significantly more uh, nasty as time goes on. And uh, they, while we do have uh, we have turrets there and we have landmines set down there, they will you know they'll eventually run out. So we gotta we gotta move quick. So we're gonna scour the area. We're gonna build up our uh, our resource gathering, and we're going to try and get there. Unfortunately. Like you could just make a, a whole army made up entirely of assault marines leap across the chasm and fight your way across. I'm gonna build up an orbital beacon instead, cause like you know, like I don't, I don't really I mean, think I, that highly. Having, having <laughs> done that back, uh, back when this game uh, this game released, basically just to see if uh, see if I could. Here's the uh, the basic result from that. Yes, you can. Also, it's one of the most boring things you'll ever do you'll ever do in your life. <laughs> like it seriously is like, like you you feel yes, you feel kind of clever for a little bit because uh, because you're you're ignoring a whole bunch of objectives that uh, that the game has given you. While the but uh, but by the same token, it's just uh, just like you have pretty much three uh, three buttons. One is spawn uh, spawn assault marine. Two is jump assault marine. Three is throw melt a bomb. Okay, game tape solved. Yeah, and, uh, Wipe the, your hands. The, and the Chaos Forces do have a few kinds of units that still will absolutely shred an Assault Marine unit. Uh, they they have access to their to the possessed. The uh, the possessed are the late game uh, close combat unit of the uh, Chaos Space Marines, and they are absolutely terrifying. Yep, and, get away uh, from those. <laughs> once once a Chaos Space Marine player gets to there, it's just like you you have a hell of a job ahead of you to get rid of them. And for what it's worth, he means that bo uh, both uh, both mechanically and and uh, what's the word uh, the word I'm looking for um, thematically. Uh, <laughs> and, well, and thematically, yeah. Uh, or I was I was going to say metaphorically, I guess, because uh, because they're they're terrifying metaphorically in that they they do an absolutely staggering amount of physical damage. So once they get, uh, they get into physical combat with uh, with you, they like, like that's very close to it. And they uh, they do have actual uh, actual hit points, so it's not li uh, like the wailing banshees where you can just cut them down immediately. You need absolutely withering firepower to do that. But also literally, in that when they're when they're in in close combat with so uh, with something, you know everything around them is just going to constantly lose uh, lose morale it's just one uh, it's just one of their inherents and, and it gets even worse in uh, in later expansions where they get the ability to breathe fire as they run around yeah because uh, that just absolutely toasts morale as well yep. <laughs> they they're great they're a really good you know I love possess they really are like they're one of the they're one of the they're one of the things that still make me like oh yes I will play Cal space Marines today <laughs> if I play total war because they're just they're just they're good they're fun and they make a lot of uh, a lot of winter assaults bullshit a lot less bullshit <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how how much uh, how much I I benefit from that when the time comes. But uh, I, I'm a spoiler a spoiler alert. I don't think it's really in the cards because I've got thoughts. <laughs> he's got he's got plans. I've got thoughts and plans. All right, all right. You are you are moving at a pretty decent clip though. Yeah. Uh, like you said, the uh they. They, I have the advantage over uh, generally over Chaos Space Marines, so I'm just moving like and, and and keep in mind this is like all of my takes of the of these missions have been for the most part the first time I've played them in like years. Right. <laughs> so so I was I'm operating primarily just off of memory of this, and I thought well I'll just sweep this area clear first before I move on to like try and get over there, and as it'll turn out that'll give me all the money and all the all the power I need to, to do it in the first place. I'm more just ta uh, just talking about about how well you're multitasking, creating new uh, new units, marshalling the, uh, them to the front, securing the uh, the points that uh, that you have. You have uh, that you've secured, and then continuing to push forward as you, uh, as, as your your combat units go uh, go idle. Like it's, it's I mean, all coming is, back to me. Yeah, this, <laughs> like, and for what it, for what it's worth, this is this is one uh, one of the reasons. This is like the big reason why I always liked uh, this game over a lot of a lot of other RTSs is that that that. Um, I don't want to call I don't want to call it du uh, duality, but like like that juggling that juggling match that uh, that you run you run into of of keeping the uh, the entire supply line going and keeping the 
keeping the uh, the um, the battle line pushing out is really what uh, what separates this game from a lot of other RTS games where you only do mm. one of one or one or two of those things at a time. Like uh, that was that was some uh, something that that like Empire Earth uh, definitely ha I had a problem with is that there was there was always there was always situations where you're just building and then you would go out raiding and then that was that was it. There were these big uh, there were these big stretches where more or less no uh, no no combat was happening in this combat game and. Like that's basically ne a never true in uh, in Dawn of War uh, Dawn of War One. If you're not fighting, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, here it goes. You're gonna gonna get it, get into a snipey war. Yep, just gonna have a bit of a gonna have a bit of a fight with uh, with some of these chaos boys at distance. I mean, you, since you've got heavy bolters and everything, you're actually equipped to, uh, to handle that out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't mention it, but when uh, when uh, brother Mattiel said he was going to hold the line, he didn't. They're all, all yeah. those all those blood ravens are dead. <laughs> not the uh, not their finest hour. But they, well, I mean, it was their last, so whichever. Uh, yeah, the, those those guys those guys you can't you can't rescue them, and you can't well. As in, you cannot take control of them. Yeah. Like if you move super quick, you uh, you can you can clear the you can clear the uh, the opposite edge of the gorge before before they dive. Then they just sort of stand there. It's not actually worth it. Or yeah. or like like you you are much better served by uh, by just continuing to secure strategic points. I always loved the uh, the. Uh, <laughs> The, yeah. the, the, the gurgle the bluff at the end there? Is, yeah, they're, they're, they're just like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> they're, they're just not not exactly sure what uh, what to do. Is they, They've got like a thousand bolter shells in, in them, so they just sort of laugh as they go out. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm just sort of like, sort of not paying attention to how ridiculous amount of resources I'm getting because I just wanted to poke over here for a moment and just like see what happened. And, uh... It'll it'll very quickly demonstrate that uh, <laughs> that that it's not going to be quite so easy for this one assault squad to, to get away with shenanigans. So I should uh, definitely look at yeah. Yep. Getting my stuff up. I'm like yep. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need more building. I'm gonna need I more building. Because I can build a machine cult. Like it's not actually like I'm not, not unable yeah, not to even, build it. It's not even remotely required actually. Like it's it's nice because you don't have to build all of that crap yourself. But if I want to do my orbital beacon thing, then I'm gonna have to build it because I can't upgrade my uh, my main HQ to that level. And yeah, so uh, unfortunately, the uh, the possessed are there. They oh are yeah, I was dangerous. wondering why they were losing because I didn't. I only saw the cultists, and then, and then I was like, I vaguely he uh, heard the like wet slapping noise that is their <laughs> melee attack, and I was just like, that's not a cultist. Knowledge is. I was like, what the hell is that? And so it's time for a little bit of lore chat. Oh possessed, possessed are uh, quite literally what their name suggests. Uh, the the big thing about uh, like chaos worship in the Warhammer Forty Thousand universe is that space marines tend to be the favored target of choice for the attentions of the chaos gods. These these mighty entities that exist within the uh, within the warp, the very the very space that is used to uh, to tap into with psychic powers, to travel long distances through space by the Imperium, things like that. Uh, they're they're basically just massive theme encompassing uber creatures that just love fucking with each other and everything else. And they really like space marines because a space marine, as we've said, is built to be extremely durable, ridiculously durable. And as a result, they can take a lot more of what is thrown out by the Chaos Gods. So, Chaos Gods like to give their champions lots of gifts. They like to give them extra eyes, the ability to see through time, all sorts of things. And, yeah, you know, that's fantastic. But the average person probably isn't equipped to be able to handle that many changes on themselves before it kills them or drives them crazy. A Space Marine is sterner stuff mentally and physically, and thus thus they can get a lot more powerful. It's it's quite telling that most of the uh, the... Primarchs that fell to chaos became demon princes in short order, simply because they could handle everything that the chaos god stuffed upon them. Now, possessed are not those kinds of people. They're not the champions. 
What they are, are intentional attempts to place demons inside of space marines. Because demonic possession is also a thing that happens, but the average human body uh, can, can't really handle for very long periods of time the presence of a demon inside of them. Because, you know, these things are kind of, kind of funky, they kind of, you know, devour your soul, and they also kind of just make your body start falling apart at the seams because the energies that they require aren't really supposed to be in real space. And as a result, On alert, you know, like, the the, you can have someone nearby. in there for a little while and, and, and they'll pass they'll like pass away. They're this typically this referred to as demon hosts died. by the Imperium. Some radical inquisitors like to use them, generally not looked upon very favorably, That's a, but a, you can for, use them like, to... Like, being completely real, <laughs> demon host use is a terrible idea. Terrible idea that doesn't stop a lot of Inquisitors from doing it. Yeah, so Chaos, Chaos Space Marines can, you know, someone possessed by a demon as a Chaos Space Marine can generally sort of, for the most part, keep their brain, even if their body goes through some, some weird changes, and even if they break, they still have a demon in there who can make use of this much sturdier body that doesn't fall apart as quickly to be able to, to do what the demon needs to do. And demons are often thrown into hosts for a variety of reasons, to ask questions, to be able to have a prolonged... Uh, period of contact with the uh, with the person who summoned them in, and they also serve as uh, a way for Chaos Space Marines to guide their ships through the warp, because the demons can tell them where the safe passages through the warp are to get to where they need to go. Of course, those sorts of demons do need to be bound by pacts and contracts and all sorts of other things, so they don't just lead you into a sun because it's funny. <laughs> this is totally something that would happen, particularly if it's a, uh, if it's a, a demon of Zeench. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that dude loves him some throw you into the uh, into the into the into the sun. Well, well then don't don't worry. We will eventually get uh, get to talking about each each of the individual cha uh, chaos gods. But those are those are also giant podcasts in and of themselves. So for now, let's just talk about chaos in gen in general because there's still a lot to say with that. Yeah. So so in that regard, the uh, and they're still space marines, so they can still go and fight and everything like that. Right. There, are, there are some instances in uh, in the Horus Heresy novels, uh, which of course details the beginnings of the Chaos Space Marines, and uh, and it was it was uh, something that was practiced by the Word Bearers, who were a uh, traitor legion, who more or less are the reason why the Horus Heresy even happens. <laughs> yep. <laughs> for for all, it's called the Horus Heresy, but it it really should be more like the Lorgar. The Lorgar did it. Lorgar like, just call the it the DIDIT, the, the Lorgar did it. Yeah, so ba basically, part of the, part of the um, context around the time, at the time of the Horus Heresy is that, like, like, we've, like we've established, Chaos is, cha uh, Chaos ha has a bunch of dark gods, right? Yes. There's, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a fistful of them, and one of the things that the Emperor of Mankind had in his head was that if he... If he conquered enough of the galaxy and filled it with uh, with this atheistic um, agno or slash agnostic dogma that uh, that he uh, that he ha he was working on, he would be able to starve out the uh, the dark gods and make them not relevant in real space. The word bearers ha uh, had a particular like had a particular disassociation with uh, with that because after they uh, after Lorgar had been uh, had been scattered to uh, to the not uh, the nine winds which was something that the chaos gods did to uh, to attempt to um to attempt to disrupt this plan of the emperors they happened to grow or lorgar happened to grow up on a particularly devout world and we could get uh, get in, uh, get into a lot a lot of reasons why uh, why this particular plan of the emperor's failed not the least of which is that he was too terrible of a planner and father to actually tell his kids about this because he was uh, he was under the impression that he would just sort of that they would screw it up if they knew what was going on and so uh, so that was also an entire an entire thing. Not go uh, going to mention that uh, that <laughs> this, this specifically right now there's because so many there's like even with so Lorgo himself, there are so many ways that the Emperor could have better handled that. <laughs> Land Raider yeah. time! It's time, Land ladies and gentlemen. Time, boy. The, the relic unit for the Space Marines is the Land Raider, and mm -hmm. what the Land Raider is is it's something that sort of resembles a a lot more technified version of a World War One tank. Uh, it has twin, like it has a lot of variations to it, but it it stands apart as the strongest, toughest, 
land unit that you could ever see in a space marine a space marine army they're like regular shots of like of like some of the most powerful weapons that they'll face and on a scale of dawn of war just bounces straight off the front of them they're designed to to tear through the front of the enemy to raking them with anti-infantry fire anti-tank fire and to disgorge units directly into the fight through holes in fortifications that they themselves have smashed through through sheer Indeed. force they can carry terminators inside of them we talked that we, we've joked previously about primaris marines being able to fit in rhinos and everyone else has posted the the grav uh the grav um utility trucks that apparently they use which which that's even uh, funnier than the jokes we made. My honestly, my, so. my brain my brain was just like yeah I love <laughs> like, that. How do you how do I you even come back is. on that? It's just so freaking ridiculous. It's just so it. stupid. I can't even. Bro, there are bro, a number bro, of things, of the dumb even. things in my brain. Games Workshop yeah, is that, great. There are a number of things I can even, but that isn't one of them. Literally, yeah, Primaris Marines should be that. easily able to hang out in the Land Raider anyway. Where the Rhino yeah. is a strong, tough you know tr strong, tough system. The Land Raider is obscenely strong and tough. Like it's an actual tank. And yeah, it's... <laughs> we'll we'll be able to we'll be able to see uh, see one coming in here uh, here in just, a, just a I'm few just minutes. going to build no other vehicles except Land Raiders because you can do that in Dawn of War. I uh, will. I think some later iterations actually uh, add uh, add limits to how many you can build, <laughs> which is like okay, fine, I get you. But at I mean... the same time, come on, like. <laughs> <laughs> this game, this game, the only thing you are limited by is your vehicle cap. Look at that mf'er! Look at that big son of a bitch! Yes, and we have we haven't even gone into like the most like important factor of the, the Land Raider, but I'll give you all a bit of a rundown of what he's what he's packing. Uh, twin linked heavy bolters on a turret. So that's yep. really good at just chewing through and suppressing infantry. And on either sponson, we have twin-linked LAS cannons, yes. which means that its anti-armor firepower is ridiculous. And also, like, you know, and and just just seeing these things in action is a treat. So I'm going to build up quite a few of them. And this this lane mission is so long because I'm going to be spending most of my time just letting them roll around and destroy things. I mean, there's actually so like, gleeful when they're doing it. There's actually like a chaos base that sort of which which pumps out the troops that are being sent to attack us here. That's sort of tucked off in a corner. And I guess the idea is the game wants us to ignore that and just focus on on doing the mission or destroying the chapel gates and going inside. I'm going to set the land raiders against that base by themselves to destroy it. <laughs> just, just this the land raiders. Me. Like we're just gonna be me. some land raider shenanigans. I was, I was doing some funny reading actually regarding the land raider. I was looking because talking about the Bad Up War got me reading Imperial Armor books nine and ten from Forge World, which is like the 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 big details of the Bad Up conflict. And they they have a little section in there about land raiders because they had a new land raider type. But it was so funny because apparently there was like this this big stink in the in the Adeptus Mechanicus because the 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 followers of land I don't know if that's what they called themselves but yeah, basically cool. uh, a bunch of Mechanicus people who thought land was the shit for finding this STC was like guys we've got the land speeder we've got the land raider what if what and, and you know and then it's like we know about the we also know about the rhino right. And they're looking yeah. at these things and going, but what if there was something that sat in between all of these things? What if there was like another tank design somewhere in there, and we just haven't we haven't unlocked it yet? <laughs> and the mechanicus was like, "Uh, stop, stop." There's no and like that. There was there was a bit of a little bit of a, a little bit of religious persecution inside of the uh, mechanicus because of the people from, were basically just saying, "But what if we did this?" And turned it this way. Doesn't that look like a different tank? And they were like, "Please stop! <laughs> Please fucking stop!" You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna ma uh, make some demon's true name. Like, the, oh god. Well, good night, idiots. Yeah. And the last great feature of the Land Raider is it's a. Uh, because we talked again, we're going into the mechanics again. We talked about the we talked about the way that the machine spirit functions mm -hmm. in in the religious beliefs of the of the mechanicus. This pre this idea, and you know, we came from we came from Neo. We came from Let's Play Neo, where we talked about the Shinto ideas of of the of the you know the one million gods or whatever you might call it. I don't know the exact number of it, but the idea that the that there are spirits that are live inside of things that develop as a result of the way that we treat them or neglect them, things like that. And so the machine spirit's not too dissimilar, you know, the idea that within every machine there is a, there is a spirit that must be appeased, it ties into the whole Omnissiah thing. So here's the funny part. Uh, in, the, in the case of the Land Raider, 
Uh, it's actually an AI system. It has an actual yep. thinking AI system in there that can take control in the event that the uh, in the event that the crew is either just not inside of it at the time, or or incapacitated or killed. You know, if they like completely unthinkable happens, and as a result, a there has been more than one occasion of a land raider thought lost on a battlefield finding its way back through enemy lines to return to its space marine chapter. Because it's 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 AI kicked in and went. I am behind enemy lines. I will move to here to be recovered. Vroom, bang, 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 and just everyone else just goes. Oh no, ghost tank. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost ex that, that's very much the uh, the way that uh, that it uh, that it's interpreted as well. It's it's one of those brilliant moments where you where you can you can kind of un understand like how the mechanicus have it almost right. <laughs> in so uh, in so far as as like the the machine spirit, and I say that uh, as I say this as as like a programmer or whatever, you frequently feel like a, a, a like like this when you're maintaining old code that nobody's really sure how it, how it works anymore but you just have this like weird procedure it's just like look if you do it this way i promise it'll work just don't think about it too hard because you have other work to do and that is that's just that is how rituals <laughs> to the machine spirit start happening like, like like i don't really understand how the uh, how this like mechanism works anymore but i do know that if i put the uh, the sanctified the sanctified oil on it it's just wd-40 and i and if i if i turn if i turn the the sanctified wheels more of uh, like four times it's just a hatch cover <laughs> i'll be able to uh, to access uh, to access the uh, the hallow uh, the hallowed spirit core it's a it's a v8 <laughs> just a v8 engine and then i can do what uh, what i what i need to do and so in a, in a in a in a universe where that sort of a sort of thing exists, you have you have what amounts to a, a, like a mostly functional AI that uh, that kicks in. Yeah, that's just ghosts. That's just fucking ghosts. That is proof that the Omnissiah, the machine god that uh, that overlooks all things with gears, exists and loves the Imperium. <laughs> and boy, it gets even scary when you start involving things like uh, like Titans. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Titans is also known as as vehicle not appearing in the in this game, but uh, those those things like so I, I, I feel the need to reference Me uh, Megas XLR. We all love giant robots. That yes. does that 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 is very true with the Imperium and especially the Imperial Guard, who are just regular like populated by regular humans in a universe of horrors. Hell yes, they love giant robots. <laughs> and see, and see, the 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 largest titan uh, that, that can be accessed by the uh, by by the titan legions of Mars, because yes, of course. Yeah, let's good let's, one, man. You know, they died. They, look, I can't help, but they died too quickly. <laughs> I cancelled it though. I cancelled it. You did. Okay, cool. I, I, I bump bar cancelled, so it wasn't a horrible. I thought you were just gonna stand there with your thumb up your nose for uh, for like, or like thirty just, seconds watching just the watch fireworks. It, watch it. Watch it. Is all around me are familiar faces. No, thankfully not. Hello, anti-darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Hello, Bombard, my old friend. <laughs> You've managed not kill anything again. I thought I would kill the Chaos Space Marines, but the Terminators shot them to smithereens. Now I'm standing there and watching as the missiles hit the ground and kill absolutely nothing at all. What the fuck? I can only what wish bullshit. we had... We had freaking <laughs> planned that joke, but no, no, I just, I just threw <laughs> just that one across the, pa uh, the plate and you, th and you hit it out of the park. <laughs> just Fantastic. Oh, uh, dear, I, like, ah, uh, just, that. The, 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 I'm going to hit some good orbital, orbital bombardments at some point in this. So, so we're at, like four land raiders, so now I'm ready to just start, like, Death driving has around. Arrived, not, having... not, ar not arguing with that. Just building up behind them. This takes up more time than it needs to. But goddamn it, I was expecting them to actually be pushing out a lot more than they have. But when the land raiders came out, I think they just kind of keep lightly running into them with me not seeing, and the land raider just chooses them to death. 
I have noticed a, noticed a them. fair bit of a fair bit of red show up. Like you can see it o over <laughs> over in the center right now. And uh, I'm just I'm just watching the mini map, watching that red just go away. Yeah, it's getting smaller. <laughs> yep, that's because I'm. Yep. Yep. Bye. Good night. <laughs> Yeah, Your heavy cover means shit. Your heavy cover doesn't matter. We have twin length last cannons. That 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 is a blarg I'm dead moment. <laughs> oh dear, but it's just like like once you get the land raider, I think is a lot with uh, probably <coughs> the point like in when playing this game, a lot of people like absolutely 100% fall in love with this game. Because yeah, the it's game just, just like, goes, okay, now I'm feeling it. You know, these guys, you know, gods, demons, giant, giant pigs, you know, what can the space marines, boring old space marines get? And they just plonk this thing, this ch big chunky boy down in front of you, and it just looks at a bunch of enemies, and those bunch of enemies just vaporize, and you go... Yeah. The, like, they, it, yes. all of your all of your stupid demons don't uh, don't matter. We have a ton of bullets and some very very hot lasers. <laughs> oh god, I love it so much. I love so it so good. much. It's so freaking good. Yeah, so we're gonna clear we're gonna clear the front out in front of the chapel as well, and then I'm just gonna like because it is there there is there is a point to, to driving off and destroying everything too. It, uh, some some very amusing things will happen. God, I love like it's just like. At this point, just building nothing but land raiders, like not not a great not a great idea. Holding off and only building land raiders once you can in like multiplayer. Obviously, you're gonna want lots of lots of uh, dreadnoughts and predators and things. But once you can get land raiders, yeah, crank. Yeah, like in it it was well, it was strong enough that yet like it's in Winter Assault, I believe it is that that they put they put in the limits on the land raiders, and it's 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 I'm 99 sure it's just one. Like, like yeah, you, I think they buff its health a lot too, though. So it yes, I'm pretty much... sure that uh, that's true. Because like one of the other things that uh, that its machine spirit, uh, its machine spirit ability does, like what the, there it does two uh, two things. One, it, it decreases how uh, how much damage comes in, and uh, two, start uh, starting in uh, in winter assault, it also regenerate like self repairs, which is and it's one of the one of the only vehicles in the entire game that can do that. It's a scary. It's a scary boy. It's a I, lo very I, lo I love scary the boy. The Land Raider um, has a hell of a lot of variations to it as well. Like practically every Space Marine chapter has its own, and like Space Marines like to Space Marines like to figure out with you know with with the mechanics of mission different armaments they can put on it, and then like to try and submit the names so that like the 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 people will go oh, okay yeah all right so that patterns the so and so one because this this guy made that up. So he called it that, and, you know, and there have been a few occasions where, where a particular term's already been used before, and like a space marine like captain or chapter master later has gone, we should call it this, and then they've dug through the records and gone, sorry man, there's already a pattern called this, and they do it this way, and it's like, fuck! But usually they only, uh, they only hear back from uh, from the administratum on that like a century later, after they've yeah. been calling it that for uh, for... For literally a hundred <laughs> years, which is which is also one of the funnier fucking things on the planet. So you're not supposed to be able to get through here. Like they've intentionally set this up so that you can't just like walk through here. There are mines, there are turrets. It's there to basically say, stop sending your army this way. You're going to lose your entire army. Land, land raiders, raiders are <laughs> yeah, land raiders are like honey badgers in that they do not give a fuck. <laughs> I will lose a land raider through sheer attrition. But that's it, and I will rebuild that land raider. I have already got, like, so much requisition, it doesn't matter. God. Fun fact about the, uh, the Chaos Predators, by the way. Chaos Predators don't get upgradable weapon systems. Uh, they get an upgrade, uh, that allows them to just shoot, uh, shoot armor-penetrating rounds from their autocannons and stuff like that. That's like a, a 500 requisition upgrade in Winter Assault. I don't remember what it is in, like, in this. It's just, it's just, it's just an interesting fact. Yeah, so, so much, so much for that. Oh look, they're like, oh, we'll send some guys up behind them. No. <laughs> no. You think you're, you think you're clever? You're not. Oh wow, they even brought a missile launcher. They definitely think they're clever, but they're definitely not. Oh man, this is, this is so good. I'm having so much fun, of fun just watching this happen. <laughs> just... Everybody at home has brought their, brought their popcorn and their favorite drink of, of choice because this is just, this is a delight. This is the only thing light. this game was missing was the ability to name your land, ra land raiders. Yeah. If, if, everyone know, if anyone knows me, I like renaming stuff. 
and play for, if you like seeing the few like Total War Warhammer Two uh, get things we've done. I like naming stuff. I, I, <laughs> you've got you've got a knack for uh, for it too. <laughs> Just like like the one, one time one time you uh, you 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 named like I, you named a base that you lost. I lost this once, and you gave like the most scuffed smiley on the planet. The next like freaking ten hours we, uh, we were playing. Every time I'd see it, I'd lose it. <laughs> There we go. Machine spirit power! Porsche! Uh, just like everything fucking just Everything like, fucking dies. dies. And if you're if you're wondering how buildings come in for uh, for chaos, uh, their builder is like a little uh th and this is this this is kinda cute. There there is a little chaos Chaos like slave and he's all hunched over and he and he summons it in and you can uh you can press a button where basically uh, it makes him do it faster and just like chews through all his health. <laughs> it's just I like, remember that crap. It's like, yay, cruelty! Cruelty before the Dark Eldar got added. I mean, yeah, it, it that's cha that's chaos txt. Um, actually, I just I just re I realized I forgot I forgot to, fi I had to finish my thought about mm -hmm. uh, about <laughs> like the the nature of chaos and the uh, the dark yes. gods and everything like uh, like that. Because we didn't uh, get into land so, raiders, yes. Yeah, we were talking. I mean, land raiders were land raiders were more important. <laughs> BT planet, like just saying. Oh, uh, hold on a second. Can we just chat about the defiler oh, for a moment? The defiler. This is, is the defiler. Yeah. We mentioned the uh, we mentioned that chaos has a sort of a uh, a weird sort of. Like, and he's vanishing now, but we'll keep talking about it. a weird sort of variation of an artillery unit. Well, that's the Defiler, our big mm -hmm. old friend there. That machine is another demon-possessed unit. There is a demon, because demons don't just possess people; they can possess machines. Uh, machines are a lot less fun for demons to possess. They're not as big fans of it um, because they're cold. There's no soul in there, and they, you know, you can't really feel the world through the nervous system when it has none. No, if it's if it's a big enough thing, like say you know a titan, which is totally a thing that has happened, the uh, possessed titans, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, they they you know they're able to say okay, we can have some fun with that. But generally speaking, they're not the kind to like to sit back and just shoot artillery. Now you can set a defiler as that one did to stand in place and shoot its artillery cannon, and it's a really good artillery unit. But if in you know in a pinch, if the enemy line comes in to try and assault it, they're up against. A walker with very large claws that can also fuck them up. So it kind of fulfills a dual role of being the walker unit for chaos, but also the artillery unit. And it, and it's kind of like a good a good sort of way that you can start an engagement at range and then move in for close combat. It it, it gives it gives chaos a very a very interesting niche in terms of in terms of its stand uh, in terms of their standoff range. Like it. The Defiler do, uh, doesn't have uh, doesn't have quite as long a range as like the Whirlwind that, uh, that we saw, which is which yeah. can be which can be a problem. But oh, those are those are mines. No wonder they're having so many problems. <laughs> they're, um, they're, they're fist fighting them. They're fist fighting mines. Incredible. What what a what a pack of winners. <laughs> I'm just letting it happen. I don't oh, care. Oh man, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, just like, if you guys die, it's your I, again. Fault. I've been completely derailed by the by the idiocy in front of me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Kill me! Oh man! Well, you better um, hurry finish your thought. We're uh, we've only really got like another yeah. Two okay, left. I, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna fin uh, finish this thought. So, Lor uh, Lorgar was all was all already in the uh, this was already primed to uh, to basically be uh, be theistic and there there's and spiritual and there's more more to the world than what we can just see. And the Emperor basically told him no, but never told him why. So when when Lorgar eventually came into direct contact with the dark gods i believe he uh, he he originally came into contact with uh, with siege but i don't remember i remember exactly um this ve this very much just came back to my father the emperor lied to me and the gods do exist and what can they do for us and this is this is the true way forward this is what we were created for and so on and so forth and this sort of this sort of, of thought process is exactly the sort of thought process that the, uh, the chaos go uh, gods want, because they all they uh, they all represent both a like a chivalrous and a corrupted form of of human behavior and li and life's virtue. There's uh, there's corn the go uh, the god of uh, the god of courage. 
battle and revenge. And the, uh, the, the way, the reason that he ends up starting off being seductive is because he is, in fact, the, uh, the, god, uh, the god of chivalrous engagement and, of, uh, and of, of warrior's perfection. He is also the god of wanton murder and, and, ran and random slaughter. And, like, the, the, his, his followers' his entire battle cry is blood for the blood god and skulls for the skull throne. So he's known as the, as the, as the, um, blood god. Zinch is the lord, of uh, the lord of change, innovation, and sorcerers, and also, de uh, also deceit, and trickery, and, and betrayal. Oh, there's back door. <laughs> Uh, you can see how these things escalate escalate quickly, and well, there, there's a there's the other the other sorry. main uh, huh? There there was a back door. I, I, yeah. The doors are I, open. I, I, oh god! He just sort of spawned. Before they can finish. Sir, the Imperial Guard have arrived. My knowledge. Victory is ours. Wait, why did they not attack? What betrayal is this? Space Marines, cleanse these heretics. Which is what I was just talking about in terms of the overall seductive and nature of chaos and the chaos gods. After you, st uh, you start letting letting a lot of this stuff into your head, it's very. It tends to be very a very quick process where uh, wherein you start questioning everything that uh, that your uh, your life is and doing things that you otherwise wouldn't, like shooting. Eight foot tall supermen with overpowered flashlights. <laughs> the other main chaos god that uh, that people uh, people are are usually familiar with uh, with just to round it out is Nurgle, and never mind, we'll get to that later. Inquisitor Toth has arrived at your request, and what do our scouts say? The guards' distraction was a success. The Chaos Lord and his host escaped. We are, however, tracking their movements and questioning some of the traitor guard that we captured. How could I not have seen this? How is it I am blind when it matters the most? Are you referring to these traitorous guardsmen or the destruction of your homeworld, Cyrene? I should have seen the rot before it spread. Instead, I was blind for far too long. I put my own world to the torch. I killed with the Inquisition's eager sanction and watched too many innocents die in a holy firestorm. And yet, here I am again at yet another doorstep, with the Executioner's blade in my very hand. Blessed is the mind too small for doubt, Gabriel. Perhaps there is truth in there, for the both of us. I still believe, old friend. I believe in the sovereign might of the Golden Throne, and in the purity of the Imperium. But you have lost faith in yourself. Only in what I see, Isidore. Only in what I see. And what is it that you see, Captain? I see conspirators and liars more concerned with their own agenda than the will of the Emperor. I am not so easily cowed by such displays, Captain. You lied to me and cost me men. Better they die, their blood pure. If you feel warranted in handing out recriminations, then their deaths are on your head. I warned you to leave this world, to leave Tartarus for the Warp Storm. Your words still ring untrue, Inquisitor. I know you were here before we arrived. I am not in the habit of explaining my actions, Captain. But yes, I was here before you arrived. Stalking after horrors to strip my knights of their dreams. The same horrors that the legions of chaos seek. On Tartarus, there are no coincidences, Captain. There is only the storm that winnows the faithful from the heretic. Are we faithful men, Toth? Good servants of the Emperor? It is time for us to put aside our differences. What do they seek, Toth? What do you seek here? This world is cursed, Captain. Thousands of years ago, an artifact of ancient evil power was lost here. The forces of Chaos seek this artifact. They've sought it for centuries, but have never held all the pieces of the puzzle. And now they do. 
An Imperial excavation team uncovered the first marker and word somehow got to the enemy. With the knowledge of the exact planet and the first marker, it was a simple matter to uncover the remainder. Now they have the last piece necessary. A key to unearth the artifact itself. What is this artifact? A stone called the Maledictum. It contains a creature of great evil, a creature of chaos itself. The stone imprisons a demon, one of untold power. How is it possible that the citizens of Tartarus did not know this? These artifacts lay buried beneath their own cities. From what I surmise, the demon within the Maledictum may be imprisoned, but it is not powerless. It can still influence people with visions and madness. The ancient text in the Registratum Malpheus speaks of a warp storm that visited this system at an age when many Space Marine chapters were still young. The storm drove the inhabitants of this planet insane. Under the demon's influence, they hit the markers and buried the Maledictum to protect it against hunters like myself. When colonists returned to this world, they remained ignorant of the perils. They built over the dark places, never knowing what lay beneath. And the Eldar, did they seek this power for themselves? No, it was they who imprisoned the demon in the first place. The Eldar fiercely safeguard knowledge of the stone against all others, going so far as to interfere in our efforts to find it. As Chaos's most ancient enemy, they see themselves as the only capable defense against its influence, and we have paid for their arrogance. I assume there is still time to avert disaster. This is already a disaster. The power of the Maledictum is enough to turn the faithful and drive men mad. Many of the Imperial Guard and local population have already turned, as you've seen. It's affecting you, and your men as well. I can feel it. It is calling the Warp Storm to eclipse this system. It wants to trap us here, with it, so it can force even the best of us to serve its twisted will. This is why I encouraged you to leave. Why I still encourage it. You know I cannot do that. I will not shrink away in the face of evil. I would do no less. Enough. Let us end this bickering and face our enemy united. Together, we have a better chance of finding and destroying the Maledictum. Paying attention to the conversation, is the door. I don't definitely know why we was keep not. you around anymore. <laughs> he definitely was not. Yeah, you know, speaking of <laughs> speaking of of the the entire seduc <clears throat> seductive um, pathway that uh, that I was talking about after you mm -hmm. after you start you start thinking about these uh, these sorts of things, it escalates very very quickly. But yeah, I'll go. I'll talk about the uh, the other uh, the other chaos gods and more uh, more about chaos next time because uh, there will be a next time. <laughs> Yes, because, yeah, they might have, you know, they had their ritual going with their key, but they haven't completed it yet. They don't have the maledictum yet, so there's still a chance to avert this complete disaster and stop Isidore from licking it. I'm pretty sure that's his plan. He's just going to grab it and just lick, yeah, lick yeah, it. Yeah. And everyone else is just going to be like, that was gross, dude. And then the credits will roll. But until then, I've been the last robot guy. And I have been cool guy. <laughs> we'll see you all next time where we prevent Isidore from licking the maledictum. <laughs>